go from 4-2 to 2-4 to 0-6 would just be a devastating fall. So even though they are eliminated, they want to have a good showing here. They got to get a few of those wins under the belt. No as well. He put a wrench in the machine of the rest of the teams trying to head to the top of that group. Calista Rakan banned out. The Taster's Choice themselves next to each other on the ban list. And there is Galio and Cogmos. You're seeing much less Galio from the Chinese teams here as they get banned out. Yeah, you can see fairly bottom lane focused bans once again with the Kogma and the Rakan going away. Will Sardarp be willing to take a first pick job? Because that's the question here. Ben, maybe they're okay switching between either the Lulu or the Jana, but they would force him into a first pick, which would give Team WE something else if they want, like a jar. Nine seconds, the discussion coming in from Team WE, and it is going to actually be the Varus from Betty. Hasn't shown it too much, but still want to stay away from it. So you're now looking at a possible uh, Zaya or Tristana early rotation. You could also get yourself uh, the Jarvan, of course, that we've been talking so much about. Very <laughs> prevalent in the meta. Wow. Uh, but it will leave open the Janna, and I'm sure Flash was more than happy to take the Lulu on their side. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just the trade in terms of preference that we've seen from so many different teams. Yeah, and we know that Team WE prioritizes the Janna. So it's interesting here taking the Jarvan, because Carson played it in the last Flash Wolves game at the very start of the day and wasn't very effective on it. So uh, still trying to put priority probably where their practice was and going for the Jarvan. Also having the Lulu on that side makes it nice. You go in, you get popped up. Jan is not just mm -hmm. pushing you around or giving you heals. I like having that synergy of the knockoff. Yeah, it better facilitates the engage as well from the Jarvan because we've seen it paired up with the Shen too, and it can be a very effective very engage. But now Team WWE, they're looking for a potential jungler. Gragas is the immediate one that comes to mind. Condi did demonstrate his proficiency on the champion during the plans, and I'm sure that he would be more than happy to pick that up. But Team WWE also looking at something like the Tristana, unless Flash Wars take it away right here. Remember, Trist often considered yeah. a great pick into the Jarvan as well, because when he goes in, Tristana just boop. knocks you back out again. What was that? Boop. Beep boop. Yeah, a little I don't boop. Know what it is. That so is the interaction that happens between a Jarvan and a Trist. I'll be for that. Yeah. Karza locking in that Zaya for Betty. He'll have a bit of a carry game if he can get to that position and the safety of the Lulu as we expect. Yeah, now we get to see the texture of this Team WE composition. If they don't pick an AD carry here, mm -hmm. obviously Trist will be banned out and they'd have to go with something a little further down the totem pole. But the Trist makes perfect sense in this scenario. Oh, are they actually going to go for the Caitlyn once again? We saw it successful huh. beautifully the last time. Oh, man, because it's not necessarily yeah. the same level of bully matchup Agreed. up against the Zaya. That just shows a lot of confidence in the pick. They can still be doing the whole seed composition again, but their hand was shown from the last game. If Flash Wolves wants to block it, they just throw their bands at Jason Rumble, and the Siege Comp goes away. Seeing how the bands file out here for Phase 2, right towards the mid lane. Maple gets hit first with that Syndra. 25 seconds to Flash Wolves now. Looking at that comp that's going to try, as you guys said, Siege, but also have a good bit of protection from the Janna. So you can't always just commit. What do you ban away from Shia in that mid lane? What do you take away from the top lane, even, if they want to choose that rumble? Uh, earlier in the day, we saw, uh, last game, rather, we saw Shen and Lucian yeah. banned away from uh, from TSM side towards Team WE. We know that Shie definitely comfortable on that Lucian pick. You don't have to look back far to see uh, his success on the champion. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure they want to take that kind of comfort off him, but champions like Corky would fit very nicely with this comp. You do have Siege, and having that extra bit of mm. poke from the mid lane Roma could also facilitate this composition nicely. It's very interesting still that they prioritized it over the Tristana because the laning phase still could have been pretty good. Uh, just goes to show how much confidence they have in the pick and just blocking what Flash Wolves has been good at as well, right? Like, even though Flash Wolves hasn't been able to win a game, getting rid of the Rise has been one of Maple's go-to picks. Final one, it's going to be the Jace out of the hands of Shia. I feel like, yeah, like very, not very again. smart. <laughs> so they take away actually two of the big power plays of the last game and Rumble mm -hmm. and Jace right at the end there. And we were just talking about the Corky. This would also be a big denial away from Maple as well. He's most played during the regular season of the LMS uh, and also shown his proficiency too. Could this be another hover? Yeah, I mean, with banning the Rumble and the Jace, you're leaving open some of the other normal Phase 2 bans like the Talia, but uh, they haven't necessarily played great around Globals. Who knows what Flash was going to do at this point, because they have to do a little bit of self-discovery here to find exactly what they think they can win with. It is going to be the Orianna. 
And now they'll lock in for that top lane, unless they decide to do something crazy, and that just sticks with MMD. It has been a bit of a carry here for the Chinese teams, or oh, I'm sorry, for the Chinese teams, but this is Flash World, so I wonder what they'll put up there. Uh, I mean, they could still put the Javan in the top lane. You are expecting right, right. to be in the jungle, and then they just put a tank up top. But given that they want to try and play spoiler, maybe they go for something a little bit more aggressive. Instead, they're just going to go for the Shen Javan combo that we've seen so often. Ninjas are aggressive. Engage. It's incredibly similar to what they have played so far with just a slight tweak in the mid lane. It's just going to be about execution, whether or not they can be the initiators. I mean, Orianna, Shen, Jarvan can all go in at once, but you need to find that level of coordination, which so far Flash Wolves have lacked. The Cho'Gath for the top lane, Nar still up. Pretty easy pick, though, to just get bigger and bigger and want to chomp down on your opponents right now, Team WE. A lot of confidence coming out of their previous wins. They're going to look to do it with the composition they've locked in at Cho'Gath top. Corky for Shie in the mid this time as their Rumble and Jace were banned out. Yeah, and essentially this is just Mystic throwing down the gauntlet, saying he can take the turret early on in the game, and they can start that early turret snowball, which has been the way a lot of teams have won. Even when you have the Lulu Trist, like so many of those three or 4,000 mid-game gold yep. leads have come from turret snowball because the rest of the comp is actually late game scaling for Team WE if you look at the solo leads. Now, I do feel that one of the big differences between Flash Rose and TSM is this Shen pick that can be used to force plays around the bottom side of the map. Remember that uh, what we failed to see from TSM was them really trying to answer any of this early pressure. And while they had a lot of scaling lanes that were all being pushed in, it was difficult for the Java to kind of make those plays. But now if he brings in the Shen, if you have an Orianna to back you up, there are a few early game options that you have, especially towards the bot side of the map. Hashtag FW win, hashtag WE win. As we head into game, Flash Walls, as we said, looking to play spoiler and just need to continue their early game, always finding a hit there, but then letting it kind of just fly away, just dissolves right in front of them and they can't do anything about it. Team WE on that run, three and one looking to top Group D throughout the entire day. And so far, they're on a good run. And remember, a win here for Team WE doesn't necessarily secure them the quarterfinal spot, because you could have a very similar scenario to what we had last week, where all the teams start beating each other. Yeah, so far, that possibility is still alive. Team WE is 1-1 one one against TSM. They are 1-0 oh against Misfits, which yeah. would be the game they would have to win to fully clinch if they win this one as well. See the starts, pretty common for the inventories. Actually gonna go Doran's Blade in that mid for Shie, or a shield and a blade for Mystic. And a few more shields on the top side means these guys are going to be farming it out on an island themselves, unless Karsa and Kandi get a plane ticket up there to visit. Right now, just getting vision of each other in the line of scrimmage, a lot less action here in the early games of week two, you would say, until uh, they get that vision down. Here just to see where everyone is and where the junglers will be starting. Now, Jet, something us casters love to do is point our attention somewhere of where our early game focus is going to be. And I feel like we have to look at the bot lane once again, right? It's mm -hmm. the Janna, it's the Caitlyn. They saw Mystic and Ben absolutely dominate Double Lift and Biospro uh, Biofrost sorry, last game. And they're going to be looking to try and do the same. But it's a little different this time around because of the Zaya and the right. extra bit of wave kit that she has compared to someone like a Twitch. Yeah, it is harder to push in the early game Zaya. Sword Art has also gone for gold runes, whereas Biofrost had opted for armor. So the Lulu trading is going to be a little bit more dangerous if, if Mystic is able to get Sword Art down with a lot of auto attacks while he's trying to pick up coins. So you can see it's a hedge of a bet, right? He's gone Thunderlord's Lulu, which is for the lane, but he's also got gold, which is for later art and sensor right. timing. It's going to be tricky, and they got to make sure that they don't get poked too hard by Mystic's range advantage. Oh. No armor right there. Artie with the headshot as well. He doesn't want to give up until he nails this on one of them. And oh. walking through the brush allows him to get that Warlords so Warlords as well. early. Now, a pick like this, does this fold into other teams? Obviously, it could fail this game, but this is, seems like one of those things that other teams might catch on. It, it might in the next few weeks, but today, it's going to be difficult for teams to just suddenly adapt their strategy and then integrate it point. into their style. Because you've got to remember, Caitlyn, we've seen it work if you're able to successfully snowball an early advantage, but not all teams can do that. Not all teams know how to properly uh, set up for these towers and then have the confidence to just press the go button like the LPL squad have done. 
multiple times. The positioning from Betty is actually making it easier to hit those Peacemakers because he's against the wall. Mystic only has one other place to shoot it, and he is hitting all of his damage now. Another Peacemaker. Beautiful job so far. And you can see Mystic is playing the harass game extremely well, but he's actually missed, like, three CS in the first two waves uh, very closely. So not the ideal lane, but the priority is on harass of the enemy so they can get as much turret damage as possible. Staying in front, drawing a bit out. You can see just how well that Caitlyn versus Twitch game went previously versus TSN there. 34 CSD above at 15. Also want to look at this Orianna into Corky matchup from Maple and G because depending on who you talk to will tell you different things about this matchup. Personally, I'm a big advocate of the Orianna into this matchup, mm -hmm. largely because if you're able to dodge out of the Phosphorus Bomb, then uh, the Corky it's, very, it's much harder for him to be able to deal damage, and then you have the position of the Q to zone him away from the farm, and you basically should always have the pressure in this match. And also, you get to build your Nasher's Ooh. Tooth, and then you're able to win auto attack <laughs> rates too. That's how you have your information. <laughs> that, 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 that's very people. true as well, yeah. <laughs> Now stack that Rod of Ages first. We got a little boys. Maple, though, however, playing a beautiful 1 2 3 command protect as well, stopping Xie's back, which means he might be able to just get this wave to the turret as you see them approaching out of the base. If he gets a good push on, he denies CS, but he's leaving. Yeah, early on in the game as well, he has the teleport, so he's able to take a bad trade early and come back in lane, but mainly yeah. uh, he is going to have less 1v1 trading potential and is opting for more global presence on this Corky. Uh, right now, he's going to try to get that lane advantage as well, losing the trade early. Gets a free base. That teleport is in. Condi is also doing the same inside the jungle of Flash Wolf to see if he can get a deep ward in here. Reading where the minion waves are, he's not going to be slightly seen by the bottom wave coming in. It gets in unseen. There are pings coming out from the Flash Wolves telling Betty and Solot to be careful. They have suspicions that the jungle that is around there. And you can see Kasa passing his way towards the bot side. Shen yet to be level six, so there isn't that safety insurance for the Flash Wolves. But for the time being, Condi will back away. Yeah, Flash Wolf's healthy enough. They have been denied off a lot of CS, but they haven't been poked, which for now prevents Team W from actually being able to threaten that guy. Yep. Maple calling for assistance there. Gets a help on the back from Karsa. Good push here from MMD on the top side. WE is going to have to remember how much they want to go hard because there is a Shen on that side. MMD could definitely save something on the bot side. They could throw Mystic and Ben off of the aggression they've had so far. 15 CS in the lead. Looks like he's getting much of the clip that he had last game. Keep your eyes on the positioning of Mystic then. Notice how when he was trading with Betty, he was always running downwards. And that's because he's consistently avoiding the positioning of the feathers from Betty because as Zaya, you want to be maxing that E first, and that's where a lot of your laning damage comes from. So even though the trade initially looked good for Betty, because he never actually landed the, the E, that meant that Mystic was able to come out on top of the E. Firing just outside of turret range as well, repositioning after the feathers go out to dodge that damage you're talking about. And yep. Mystic again resets, and they'll have a Siege minion on this wave to actually harass with. We're going to see Karsa come down for this. Yeah, and you can see the wave clearer matching is a lot better. They haven't gotten much free time for that, but they are constantly pushed up, and that's when Karsa's going to try and get that gank off. Maybe they go for Ben, but no, they go straight for Mystic. That's going to be his barrier down, so he can stay. Still has the flash on both sides, a good heal from Ben, and the heal from Sword Art comes out on the initiation. Great polymorph there from Sword Art. It allows uh, the knock-up combo to come out from Castle, so they get a lot of damage down onto Mystic. He is forced to use the barrier and heal, but now he's back on the offensive. And they got the heal down as well, so they get barrier heal out of the other side in the extended play of the gank. That gank actually hurt Flash Wolves Ooh. more than it helped them because it's a two-for-two two summoner trade, and it made them opt into more trades than they were otherwise taking in the lane. And these choices of damage can be whenever WE wants. You hit that Zephyr, you hit a Peacemaker, you're going to win the trade. And it's on a cannon wave, yeah, too. That's that extra hurts. turret shots, which that means hurts. this turret has taken a beating. This is the type of lane, so far, the Team WE has wanted. They still need to continue to keep it going so they can break the turret. And I just, I love seeing this chat, this evolution of the meta. WE finding a creative way to to just change how we play the game, yeah. you know? It's not about just yeah. mining gold. It's not about making sure that you can, it's fine, I can blind pick the Twitch. I can blind pick the Cogmore. I can scale into late game because we're always going to have fights. Team WE are saying, no, we're going to just force the <laughs> towers down and, and punish you with it.
And it's so interesting how we can say, man, Caitlyn Jana, I'm so excited for this. Right? <laughs> because three months ago, we were like, man, Caitlyn Jana, every game, <laughs> you hit double zero late game on Caitlyn, and that's all you're playing for, boring late game strategies. And it's now this early game siege pick, but that's because the two turret snowball with teams this good is really important. And people have gone so far down one end of the road of just trying to farm up that punishing you during that path can become more rewarding. So I feel like if you're in the meta of the Thresh or the Braum 80 carries with the normal other 80 carries, like this Caitlyn John, it doesn't work. But when you're in a gold room support meta and you get to have the Caitlyn advantage, Team WE is at least making you consider the strategy. Yep, we'll and they're see. the ones trying to do it. And it seems like they know what they want here. Again, getting that Caitlyn Janna lane and switching out something else that can help poke with that. She had the Jace last time. Now they have the Corky, still keeping this composition somewhat together. All the same from last time. Working out so far in the early game, as usual. About a 25 CS lead in the bot lane as of right now. So Mystic may even look to extend that deficit, or I should say advantage we just saw. Yeah, and it's not just about the 25 CS lead. Like, by itself, this isn't worthy of making the pick. It's all about right. whether or not they can get the turrets rolling, because that's the main thing that gives the team the advantage they need. Starting a little bit of bottom coverage for that vision as well. Kars is going to answer with the same as mid laners return back and Sheen for Shie. So a bit of a power spike here if they do decide to get head-to-head uh, -head fights going on. When you speak about power spikes, you got to look at level spikes too. Now MMD is that level 7. He has the ultimate prime deck ready. If WE try to force a roam down bot, Flash Rules are in a position to answer. They have to be respectful of Xie having the package, which means he'll get to bot lane much faster than Maple will be able to on top of the teleport that he has as well. But at the very least, it's something that Flash Rules can use to try and slow WE down. No sweepers just yet, so it's going to be the uh, use of these Vision Wars to try and make something happen. Vision for both. Ooh. Carson says hello, knocks up Condi. Looks like Betty's going to be just on the outside, but Condi gets a slow in for us. His flash is calls Carson alts in. And it looks like this one will fizzle out, but mid laners may find a fight here. Condi got very aggressive there, and after his missed body slam, had to back away. Matching Condi very well. He was there well before Condi was, knowing the gank would be coming. Nice hit on the scrying orb from Karsa. The scry is bloom, I should say. And they are going to figure out that W has a few too many in the river there. They'll back off and keep farming out the lanes. A little bit of early action here, but Flash Wolves, remember, getting that first blood quite a bit. Maybe not this time. G looking to continue forcing. Maple back. He had a good trade against Maple in the river, which now results in him being well to do though. Only the sword boots going for that early tier two so that he can try and match some of the roaming power that she has. Also haven't mentioned yet that an infernal drake is on the board with pushing bot and pushing mid. Definitely we have their eyes on. Yeah, the steal is possible. The Shen ultimate could also come in, but no cataclysm is there for Karsa. Uh Connie would have to fall off this one though if Flash was decided to collapse, you think. Oh. Like almost reset. Looks like they're going to hold it on this one. MMD backing off to try and get his ultimate on. Teleport from 957, and that's going to be just over behind the red buff. Air going goes Condi. Condi stays alive. MMD in the middle of the fight, and Condi finally falls to the hands of MMD. Dragon Infernal to WE, but they do lose their jungler. Beautiful taunt flash from MMD to hit multiple members, but the shockwave from Maple was used only on to Condi. Flash Wolves, they had a great setup, they had a great plan, but I feel like the execution was a little short of what it could have overall been. And it was an incredibly risky play by Team WE. The fact that Condi still managed to get the smite with his dying breath makes it arguably worth it, especially if Shiei can get a kill here. Heal, command protect. Flashes out of the Fosh that might have been a little too far away, but still safe plays as Shiei comes in strong right off the teleport. Yeah, chunked himself out, but he's still got the call to be able to stay up. We're gonna watch this one more time. Flash Wolves, again, probably should have gone slightly sooner. They can win this with the Shen ultimate and kill Condi before he has the chance to be able to steal that. But as you mentioned, the Taunt Flash from the Shen to interrupt the Ben ultimate on Janna, and they get the kill. Uh, gotta give some credit there to Ben, using his heal onto Condi to keep him alive, immediately followed up by the ultimate as well. So they really did keep their jungler for alive as long as possible, and his focus was just like, I gotta get this Inferno while I might lose my life. Mm -hmm. I'm still happy with the trade. So, WE are able to trade objective for kill in that small exchange. 957 able to come out with the Righteous Glory now. A few more items that'll be coming into play once those teleports are back up. 
MMD is just making sure the wards he will be placing can't be circumvented by a few blast cones here. Great warding from WE throughout the river. They got their vision wards at least on that position. Kind of tells the story that they are happy to try and protect those as well. Focus to the bot side for WE. Slash Wolves come back out of base and head mostly towards the top. Yeah, both supports did make it to sensor before the turret goes down, so that itself will not swing the lane. If anything does swing the lane, it's going to be these Berserker Greaves for Mystic. So both 80 carries managed to get BF plus one damage item, but Mystic with his 40 CS lead got Berserker Greaves. And the movement speed difference between him, Betty, and Sordart is going to be so monumental in denying more minions off the wave, making it so Betty can't even hit the wave until it reaches the turret, and giving more time for Mystic to hit the turret as they're trying to take this one down. There's that pull oh, through. Him. Mystic now in a big, big trouble. Featherstorm comes out. Betty actually gets pushed to the right side from Monsoon, but that's the heal for Mystic. Wild oh. growth onto Betty. They may be able to take him down, but the hits come in from Ben. And now they're on to Sword Art. Another kill picked up in that lane. Condi there just in time. Betty played that as well as he possibly could have. He came so close to getting the kill done onto Mystic, but then Condi comes in to save the day. Great Gragas ultimate to knock Betty back, secure the double kill, and WE get their first tower of the game. And he buys an Infinity Edge to add insult to injury if you're Betty and Sardar. That was the time where they needed to stand strong against Mystic. And as you mentioned, finally got the roots on to Mystic. Got him multiple times. We'll see it again. Actually, because Mystic's not moving down the same way he was prior, and also get him in the turret. Barrier with shield. Yeah. Betty also used his ulti over the trap to oh, the dodge man. that. And look at how close he is. Two more hits, one more hit might have been enough. Oh, the shield did come up just Got in time shield for Got cycled back on cooldown as well as Mystic free hitting the whole time. So maybe didn't even need Connie to come in there, but incredibly close. Another Another fight ben. towards the top side. They are not stopping. Relentless fights left and right as Ben goes down. Not enough shields for that one. Carso very, very Ooh. low. I mean, gets away. Flash Wolves knows exactly what Team W wants to do. Yeah. And Team W is brute forcing it. But Carso was there first. Condi wasn't there to match. The ultimate was down from Team W. So they're actually going a little bit faster than they should because their setup doesn't quite justify it. On to Maple in the mid lane. Remember, everything was just blown to she a Don't oh. under the turret and they chomp down. On to Maple to take him down. Righteous glory already complete. WE 957 does use the flash. But I don't. It will kind of Whoa, I MMD die. coming in. Maybe not. I wanted to finish that one. Nobody else is there to help him. He gets out alive, maybe, to get out as he limps out. 17 seconds on the Maple, so nobody was even going to be coming in from anywhere for that. Yeah, and it's almost spooky how similar this game is to last game Team WE played, where you remember, they take that bottom lane turret first, then the top laner roams to mid during the swap to gank the mid laner and get turret pressure. They crack the mid lane turret before you expect to during the cycle. I really love how Team WE has drilled this and they're doing it twice in a row. Flash Wolves knows most of what's going, but they were not ready for that tweak to it where the top laner goes mid. You know, and one thing that we haven't even mentioned yet was the fact that Coming into the game, we were like, MMD picking this Shen maybe could act as a counter to the bottom lane plays that Team WE are trying to make. I'm not sure why MMD didn't use his ulti down into the bottom lane. He did use it mid to try yeah. and keep Maple alive, but that Shen ulti could have swung that whole exchange back in the favor of Flash Wolves. And it just kind of makes you wonder what the value of this pick was, because Flash Wolves, they're yet to really optimize MMD. The BF Sword also picked up by Shie as he comes out of base, which means these fights are only going to continue happening. Mystic looking to get that in. Infinity Edge damage down here with his team behind him. And they are just kind of running Flash Wolves around the top side of this map. Flash Wolves know they are going to have to defend something soon. It's just when does WE pull the trigger? That's they have been relentless. I feel like WE are already pulling the trigger, right? So we Again, get to look right? back at the gank up top lane. Kasi using his ulti to dodge out from the knockup of the Janna uh, Q there. They're able to get a bit of vengeance for themselves, but we also have to move back towards yep. the mid lane as Maple. He did his best, but he used his flash in the earlier exchange against Shia. He couldn't buy enough time yep. for the Shen to get in. He gets immediately obliterated. Yeah, the early Righteous Glory as well from 957, making the global pressure answered. The reason MMD used the Shen ultimate there rather than bottom lane is because of the cooldown from the prior fight they had. Right, the right. Dragon Pit, a very long early game cooldown, and in the current meta, oftentimes fights aren't happening frequently enough for that to matter, but with the way Team WE is pushing the pace, they're actually taking advantage of those Shen Ultimate windows. Maple returns back to mid. They finally have wards to keep him safe, at least from everything that's happening from this top side. Condi wants to be there because that's where his bottom lane is now, and they keep the siege going. 
And it looks like they'll put a lot more protection there as well. Just a Cloud Drake on the bottom. So we'd expect to see Rift Herald getting a little bit of love here along with this top side turret. Pushing up just about half health down. Maple makes himself present as well. Flag and drag out. And it looks like WE is just ready for a little guerrilla warfare here. Try to find some summoners to make this fight even more in their favor. Yeah, just trying to get priority in as many lanes as possible so they can keep going faster and faster here because there's still a world where they don't have this ultra insane late game team composition. Caitlyn's nerfs were very meaningful. That's why she dropped out of the meta. You need to take as much advantage of this early turret push as you possibly can. Well, and then these seem to be a little caught out. Valkyrie over the wall. A few more shots should be able to take him down, but it actually is 957. He takes seconds on that one. 957 enjoying a bit of ninja brunch. Is able to add another stack to his list of stacks. List, consumption, I don't know. Either way, it's going to result in a Rift Tower going in favor of Team WE. The pressure will just continue to mount. Another significant goal lead in their favor. Not quite as fast as their game versus TSM, but still just as dominant. Yeah, second champion Nom he has had, so he's already stacked up six. That's the max you can get from Minions or Monsters. He only gets bigger now by chomping down on the major objectives or on champions for the kill. So eight stacks already, 18 minutes in the game. Got to feel pretty good. Shelly towards the top side, helping out WE just a little bit. Remember the use of that Rift Herald was taking down an inhibitor turret last time. But you can still see the pace of the game in favor of Team WE. Oh yeah, this is not going as well as it did against CSM. I think Flash Wolves have actually done a lot more in the early game to preempt some of the moves by Team WE, but they are still falling fairly far behind the pace. 5,000 gold. Yeah, looking at that, 30, is it going to crest 35.5 to 29? Point four, and we see three turrets in the favor of WE. After that happened, they took down a few more turrets, so their spike in gold is also a little slowed in this game, but they're yeah. still finding their openings. Yeah, and they can still siege with the Eastern composition. It's just a little bit different, like the Jace poke uh, right. is a much more early game spike poke than the Corky poke, uh, much like the Cho'Gath and the Rumble. Uh, just have very different functions in team fights, but they're using 957 extremely well this game as a ganker with the Righteous Glory on Cho'Gath. Yeah. Roaming Cho. Oh, yeah. Uh, the dinosaur on a mission. Now, Team WE already 3 and 1. We talked about what it means to them getting that 4 1 position. It doesn't quite mean that they've locked in that quarterfinal spot. There's still the possibility of a tiebreaker, mm -hmm. depending on how they play against Misfits, which I believe is at the very end of the day. But correct. Mystic now going for a 1v1. Wild goes on to Betty. Cast is going to slow them down, which means Mystic hits more of his shots and peacemakers. And the teleport comes in. It looks like they are just going to go ahead and pressure this one. They may not know that GA is going to be there. He stops his teleport to higher in the top lane. There's no flash on MMD. Mystic, he's going for the chase. GA now going to come up from oh, mid. Goodness. Just going to Valkyrie over the wall and get his hands into this pie. He stays. They're pushing mid lane a little bit. Nice shockwave to stop the fight. But Flash Wolves has to use so much with Team WE still knocking on that front door. And the oh. final, final shots in for MMD. 40 seconds on the clock so far. It looks like mid turret could be Team WE. And all their stuff is used defensively. WE had to use almost nothing right there. Now they yeah. just get to 5v4 seed this turret with the giant nine stack Cho'Gath in front. Bot lane and top lane are nowhere to be seen for minions. So this is all about mid for Team WE. That's where their focus is. It was for Maple. Now they're on to Condi with a bit of a mistake here. They greed past the inhibitor turret thinking they have it. And it looks like they lose one Mystic very close to going down as well. A nice return on to Maple. And he gets chomped alive. 957 is connecting with each one of these. Fantastic pick there from Casta using the ultimate to punish Condi and then using the EQ combo to get out of his own ulti so that he doesn't end up getting caught himself. The problem is that big stack Cho'Gath that's able to just walk up and nom down onto the Flashless Maple. They end up trading one for one, but Flash Wolves are able to successfully hold onto their base. Yeah, that was probably overambitious by Team WE when you consider that dive by Condi into the Lulu and the Jarvan. It was a suicide mission and they couldn't get that much off of it, but the Cho'Gath is such a strong frontliner for them in this game. 957 is playing so well. Now a 10 stack Cho'Gath under 22 minutes into the game. Watch one more time. Kanye just missed. Yeah, he missed. And just watch Kasa here as well. He's gonna get knocked up. Use the EQ to not only knock up Mystic, but also dodge out from the knockup. And then you think, oh, Mystic, he takes a lot of damage here. He could lose his life. Forced to use both summoner spells. Oh. And then this is where Maple unfortunately meets Hot Mines. 
If there was another dissonance there coming in from Maple, that would have been a very dead mystic. Understanding the cooldowns there, just getting lucky in that sense. But they get out alive. Nobody has the summoners they had going into that fight. That's what starts to make these fights with core items a little bit more dangerous. It comes down to that vision and the positioning much, much more. 63 here coming in four turrets for Team WE as again they capitalize on the macro of the game. Now see if they can put the objectives and the fights in their favor continuously. Yeah, but when we keep talking about the damage difference of Mystic and the enemy AD carries, it is him, but it's also his team. He is so good at getting his, and WE is so good at stopping the enemy team from playing around their carry. Good punch out. We get the Chen ultimate out of that as well. And it looks like Stand United will be down along with that teleport. It's going to have to be a top side stay for MMD as they lose pressure towards that bot. Nine, or 957 and the rest of the team just control everything in the jungle right now. It's going to be hard for Flash Wolves to find a way in. WB, they're setting up nicely around the Baron. They've got good river control. Flash Wolves feel it started. MMD can take a few hits. That's his job, but can he get out before it's too much? The chomp down, but the final shot from Mystic to clean that one up. And Team WE again gains control of the map. Yeah, he's just not nearly tanky enough. Ninja Tabi and his Spectre's Cal to go with Hydra. He's getting shredded by the two of them. 1,277 damage is what Feast would have done if he hadn't used it onto MMG there. That's what it would do to Bear. Betty GA back and forth. And it looks like the barrier is now down for him. Flashes up for Betty if he does need to get into a sticky situation there. Team WE working on the Baron at 4,500 health. Karsa just on the outside. His flag and drag is used with the smite being up. So they are out. They pull back and they try to get whatever push they can on the mid lane. Team WE a, much. a little bit separated there, but it was mainly Shia trying to keep mid pushed up, yeah. while 957 was just tanking up the Baron. Condi was there to provide assistance for Shia, but regardless, Flash Wars can't punish. They did not have Shen available to help them, and this is how all of that kicked off. Yeah, Team WE is just dominating. MMD face checks at the start because he doesn't know where Baron is, but this is another lack of coordination for Flash Wars, right? He's walking in there, and what is he hoping to have happen, right? Is he hoping to see them at Baron and be safe? Because if he gets jumped on, well, Orianna isn't there either. If he does see them, what do you do about it? Your team's not there either. So he's just so far ahead of the rest of the team. Just about a thousand damage between both of them from the shot of GA. He makes his way out with the package, and they are feeling very good about their damage. Very good about taking these fights. Mystic rapid fire done, core items all over the place, and third items here coming in for Team WE as they approach the base again. Yeah, the attack speed per level nerfs are irrelevant when you have a static shiv over your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Mystic a full item ahead of bed. He is extremely strong right now, but so is the entire lineup of Team WE. 9,000 gold ahead of only 25 minutes into the game. Very similar to what they were able to do against TSM. And you have to imagine that from here on out throughout the rest of the tournament, I don't think they're gonna get Caitlyn again. <laughs> I mean, at least in game three, there's so many other priority bands, but maybe they push Caitlyn into that tier. That means you're gonna give him Zaya, Trist, Cog, or Twitch, right? So there's many. so many other things. Exactly. But the strategy itself is working so well. It is centered around the Caitlyn, requires the team to play around it. Clearly something WE has pulled out today that is working great. And something that we talked about at the start of the day, Jam, with regards to Team WE, is that out of the four teams in this group, in wins, it was this team that looked the most convincing. They were the team that uh, beat t oh, the other team should have been afraid of, and they're looking to end things now. Flag and drag into the fight. Carson not going to live for long here, but doing what he can as they trade one for one to start. Betty on the outside pulls through Shea and 9-5 for the stun, but the turret goes down, and they have nothing to hide under but the damage of Team WE. 26 minutes in, the base is broken, and MMD stays alive from the ace of the hole. Trade one for one, but get it. Mystic is uh, ambitious, trying to get hits on this turret. The whole team is... 957 and Shea teleporting back in, but it is 4v4 without minions. Got to teleport to that minion to keep it alive. A little extra damage on the turret. Everything they can to break the willpower and the momentum that Flash Wolves has been trying to find throughout the entire game. The Nexus turrets in the eyes of Team WE. 26 wow. and a half minutes into the game. Never faltering from game to game here in week two of the group stages. And it looks like they're going to try to pick up another win without leaving the base. Flash Wolves has something else to say, but they lose Karsa as soon as he comes back up. Shiye is working a 2v1 situation around the Nexus by himself as the rest of the team goes for seconds around the base. And they are staying for the long haul. Mystic is able to get a bunch more kills as he eyes up the Nexus and looks to end the game. Team WE finally on the Nexus with that finalizing damage. No, MMD is going to get a little it bit more, more delivery. There's the chomp down.
one. Another kill for Mystics. Caitlin pick 12 to 5. Team WE take down Flash Wolves. And through a combination of brute force and strong strategy, Team WE dominate the first half of the day. They played essentially the same strategy against TSM and Flash Wolves, and Flash Wolves knew exactly what was coming. They had Karsa there before Condi and Condi arrived. They were all in position for those big turret dives, but it didn't matter. No, nope. Team WE was just flat out better at it, and they win in 27 minutes. And back to back stomps from the side of Team WE sets them up beautifully for the rest of this group. Yes, there is still the potential for the tiebreaker, but they are setting themselves up for success. Only Misfit now stands in their way. And that could all change depending on how Misfits do going up against TSM after this. But also change, as you guys said before, you leave something else up when you take out this Caitlyn pick, or you go against that Caitlyn pick and hope you can stave off that early aggression that seems to unfold across the map for Team WE. Yeah, we said before the tournament the Team WE was in the conversation for the best LPL team. At the start of the week, that didn't look too great, right? When EDG is losing the three games, they were the champions yeah. of the LPL. But so far now, you have RNG who closed the group at five and one, and Team WE who was sitting at four and runs. So a lot of that stuff that was in question at week one about how the LPL would show up here in Wuhan are starting to be answered emphatically by Team WE and RNG. But you have to praise WE for showing us two beautiful demonstrations of League of Legends, adapting to the meta and saying, there are other ways to play this game. Yeah, well, Team WE, they are looking very solid so far. Here are Dash and the analyst to tell you more about that win. Thank you very much, Riv. And on a day coming in with a three-way tie for first, what looked like could have been our most competitive, WE is starting to look like they might run away with the first seed here in Group D, moving to four and one, an even more dominant game out of them in this time around. It's just nice to finally, again, see Team WE show up and showcase why I gave them so much praise. I said coming into this tournament that they should have been the number one seed from the LPL. It was a single best of five because our teams are so uh, consistently competitive. EDG, RNG, WE every single time. Championship points meant that a single best of five decided that WE would be third seed and not get a shot at second. Nothing to say there. I mean, <laughs> everybody's looking over here. WE just stomping all over this group right now. And they're doing it with this Jana Caitlin pushing on the bottom side. This one also, though, 957 on this Cho'Gath. You have to sing his praises because there were more nuances in this game a little bit uh, than there were in the TSM one because TSM, you know, didn't put up uh, much of a fight and didn't really create much action. Right. Uh, so I think the other parts of this game should be highlighted. I mean, to me, what's interesting about this is that Flash Wolves attacked two of the core pieces to the comp that beat TSM, right? And yet, WE still found a way to do the same thing. But they actually struck incorrectly because the Jace Rumble is a combination that you can put those two in pretty much many different compositions and it works. You Shock Blast, you Equalizer, you can take people out. But WE relied on bottom lane getting significantly far ahead. And when you have Janna Caitlyn twice, that's a lane that is incredibly oppressive. That's a lane that is going to constantly push, that is going to deter many ganks. We saw Flash Wolves try to gank that lane, 3v2. They could not pull it off. They had to run back. They need to get rid of the Janna. They need to get rid of the Caitlyn. They had the opportunity to first pick it. They go with Jarvan. Come on, we saw what Karsa did against TSF or against Misfits. I mean, the Janna win rates at Worlds right now is just absolutely absurd. I am going to push back a little bit, though, Crumbs, because I, I understand what you're saying, like the Jace and the, the, the Rumble, and yeah, maybe those were the wrong ones in terms of like, the team fighting, but like the core of it is still very much the same. It's all about the sieging. And I even think that the casters were were overhyping Caitlyn or maybe detracting from that focus. I still think it is that Janna. It's Janna who, she's not compensating for the attack speed that Caitlyn has really lost over all of these nerfs, but she's still giving her like that massive big buff. You know, Janna level 9, has the shield, puts it on Caitlyn. She's running around with effectively two BF swords then and just tearing through these structures. Well, now that you bring up Janna, I want to emphasize a bit more or put a look at Janna versus Lulu, right? Okay. It's always Janna versus Lulu. Why is Janna more successful than Lulu? Well, 
it's similar to when Maokai was super meta. He's just very easy to execute. Same with Ganon. You're not going to make a lot of mistakes with this champion. You press shield, you press R, you tornado. It's that easy. And you have just saved everybody from your team. Whereas you have Lulu, you actually can misclick your polymorph. It's timings on that. You have your ultimate. You can miss Glitter Lance. It's way harder to execute. One thing also about Jenna is that she has an easy way to apply Ardent Sensor to the whole team. And something about the mid lane picks that's consistent here, you know, Corky and Jace, they can also really effectively use Ardent Sensor. They both have poke elements. So it's these other threads that are coming through. You're starting to see a lot of inbuilt synergies in these compositions that WE, you know, has discovered here moving into week two. And again, it just points to preparation. And I can't help but think when I look at it like a team like TSM coming into their first game of the day, choosing you know, all top tier picks from week one, but making no adjustments for what they assume other teams will do moving into week two. But we haven't necessarily seen a ton of footage to say that that's the definitive call on TSM Fair yet. enough. I think it's very easy for them to look at the Team WE and draft be like, oh, we should probably draft some winning lanes and then immediately make those adjustments. So I'm still holding out that there is hope for TSM later on. Well, they are going to be up next against the Misfits, of course, and this makes it a must-win game for TSM. The fact that WE is sitting at 4-1, and one, Misfits are at 3-1 and one if TSM does not win it. They cannot qualify out. So the pressure is on for them. But for WE, again, sitting pretty just looking at that Misfits game later in the day to perhaps secure the first seed, another first seed for China. And that to me is even crazier when we're looking at week one. We're like, oh no, EDG 03. Oh no, WE is looking shaky even at two and one. All of a sudden, the LPL as an entire region is looking very dominant. I mean, it certainly helps that you have the six man of the crowd behind them every single time any of these Chinese teams are taking the stage. Uh, it's just, it shakes, literally. Um, but that said, it, it's nice to see adaptation from Team WE. It's nice to see them kind of warm up, but it's about damn time, frankly, because they've been here forever. I was going to say, one thing I was looking forward to that I didn't think we'd really see until the best of fives was more of the secret picks that people are holding on to and more innovation. But WE are like, we're getting first in this group right now. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get a look at one of the strategies, but this is going to secure it for hey, us. Hey, look, if you don't make it to the knockout stages, you don't have an opportunity to pull those crazy picks out. With the fight in group, heating up. TSM looks to get their revenge on Misfits Gaming in a match they have to win to stay in the race for quarterfinals. We'll also have G2's Mithy joining us at the desk, so don't go anywhere.